Hi, I'm Eric Lotzer, and thanks for tuning in to Natchez TV. Natchez. Now that's a curious word. It seems to be on just about everything around here. You notice that? Now, I grew up thinking that Natchez was an Indian name for the tribe of people who used to live out at the Grand Village. But apparently, only the Nache part is Native American. The Chez part came with the Africans and the Europeans, giving us the name Natchez, which is now synonymous with both the folks who used to live out at the Grand Village way back when, and us today. I'm Jim Barnett. I'm the director of the Historic Properties Division for the Mississippi Department of Archives and History, based in Natchez, Mississippi, and we are at the Grand Village of the Natchez Indians, one of the properties administered by the Department of Archives and History. The Grand Village of the Natchez Indians is a national historic landmark owned by the state of Mississippi and, and operated by the Department of Archives and History. The site is the location of the historic ceremonial center for the Natchez Indians. The, the site w was first recorded by the French colonial uh, military people, missionaries, and, and others who came into this area. Archaeological evidence indicates that the site was first occupied around A.D. 1200 when mound building began here, and the site was occupied into historic contact period. The first people to see it were the members of the La Salle expedition in March of 1682, and after that a number of other French officials, uh, soldiers, and missionaries came through this area and came to the Grand Village. And it's their writings and their descriptions of the ceremonial events that took place here that make the Grand Village of the Natchez Indians a National Historic Landmark. I want to be sure and mention that, that other mound sites around the southeast that are open to the public and can be visited were occupied in prehistoric times and were deserted or uh, deserted long before Europeans ever came along to record what happened there. So. At, at places like Moundville, Alabama, and Cahokia, and East St. Louis, and Etowah, Georgia, they used the Grand Village of the Natchez Indians and the information gathered by the French here and their observations of ceremonial events to interpret what might have taken place at those larger prehistoric mound sites. The Natchez people that the French found living here were direct descendants of the mound builders of the past. Mound building stopped when Europeans came into the, the Western Hemisphere, but the French were able to observe the Natchez Indians using mounds, even though they, they did not observe them building mounds. The city of Natchez takes its name from the, the Natchez Indians. The, uh, the word Natchez is a word that, that we not really don't know what the meaning of it is. It was probably pronounced Nachi something like that by the Natchez people, but the, the C-H-E-Z suffix on the word is a result of the French use of the term, which makes it the Natchez word be the common uh, uh, pronunciation now. Ray City Toyota, home of the most popular cars and trucks in the world. They sell new and used automobiles and they're ready to deal. They've got certified used Toyotas, almost new cars with warranties at pre-owned prices. And other great deals on all used vehicles on the lot of all makes and models. Don't make concessions, get the car you want at a great price. At Tray City Toyota on Devro Drive in Natchez. At Natchez Pond, we have some great new products. Are you prepared? Check out our new line of freeze-dried food. It's lightweight, easy to store, and easy to use. And it tastes good, too. We have lots of ammo and hundreds of guns. Always remember, safety first. But if it's cash you need, bring, bring stuff. stuff. But if it's stuff you need, bring, bring money. money. Natchez Pawn and Jewelry on John R. Junkett Drive, next to the Bowen Alley. Stan's Rock and Roll Shop carries musical instruments, bikes, skateboards, and more. See Stan for a complete line of guitars, percussion equipment, PAs, and musical accessories to fulfill your musical desires. Even lessons are available. He's also got wheels aplenty, including Natchez's only source for top name skateboards and all the replacement parts and upgrades you need. He's got road bikes, mountain bikes, and comfort bikes, and everything that goes with them. He even repairs on site if it rocks. 
to roll, Stan's got it! The folks that used to live out at the Grand Village of the Natchez Indians used to oversee a massive trading empire from high atop their bluffs above the Mississippi River. Archaeologists tell me that in year one of the Common Era, probably around 350,000 people lived in the Miss Lou, seven times that of the number today. Did you ever wonder where did everybody go? Nowadays, about the only place you can find a Natchez Indian around here is at the Grand Village during their powwow which happens in March. The Natchez were like hundreds of other tribal groups across the United States were, were victims of the European invasion of North America. The, the Natchez were first contacted by the French in the late 1600s. By 1716, there was a French colony here uh, in the Natchez area. By, in 1729, Due to a lot of, of, of reasons, the Natchez Indians rebelled against the French presence here and massacred the French colony. It happened on November 28th, 1729. After that event, the French were obliged to make war on the Natchez and, and the Natchez ultimately lost that war and left this area. They migrated toward the east where their allies, the English, were located in Charleston. In that area, over toward, the, toward Charleston, the Natchez refugees were adopted by a number of, of groups. Uh, uh, Creeks and Cherokees are two main groups that adopted Natchez Indian refugees. In the breakup of the, of the Natchez tribe, some of the members of the tribe were captured by the French in the war that began in 1729 and ended in 1731. Uh, some, uh, those captives, many of them were shipped out to French possessions in the Caribbean islands uh, there, and so they died on the sugarcane sugar plantations in the Caribbean. There were probably some uh, remnants of the Natchez group that remained in the Natchez area and kept a very low profile there. They, uh, we, we think that because after 1763, when the English took possession of the Natchez area, some of these Natchez people kind of came out of, out of hiding and, and made themselves known to the English who were their allies in their war against the French. We're not really sure what became of the Natchez people who were living around here uh, in the latter part of the 18th century. Today, there are at least two groups of Natchez Indians that, are, uh, that we are aware of. One is in South Carolina. These were people who were eventually adopted in and, and taken in by the uh, uh, Catawba Indian group, which was a, con a small confederacy in the Carolina area there. And so the, the Natchez people continue to, to live in the South Carolina area there. Other uh, descendants of the Natchez tribe living with Creek and Cherokee groups were forced to leave the Southeast when the United States government moved these tribes onto Indian lands in, in what is now Oklahoma. So the Natchez Indians were forced, were uprooted really twice. They were uprooted from their homeland in the early 1730s in the Natchez area here, and they were uh, moved, and they, they migrated toward the east to be adopted by Cherokee and Creek tribes. Other uh, descendants of the Natchez tribe living with Creek and Cherokee groups were forced to leave the southeast when the United States government moved these tribes onto Indian lands in, in what is now Oklahoma. So the Natchez Indians were forced, were uprooted really twice. They were uprooted from their homeland in the early 1730s in the Natchez area here, and they were uh, moved, and they, they migrated toward the east to be adopted by Cherokee and Creek tribes. About a hundred years later, those Cherokee and Creek tribes w were themselves uprooted with their Natchez Indian people still living with them and forced to move to Indian lands 
uh, in the West. The Natchez people who are living in Oklahoma are uh, trying to reconstruct their, their tribal culture. A big part of that uh, is their effort to reconstruct the Natchez language. No one is certain how well the Natchez language can be reconstructed and, and brought back to life, so to speak. But anthropologists in the 1930s were able to record on wax cylinders Natchez people in Oklahoma telling stories in the Natchez language. So there's at least a record of what those, uh, that language sounded like. And then other anthropologists recorded lists of Natchez words that, that can be used today to, to try to, uh, to use as a basis for reconstructing this language. And, and this is a, something going on all across the United States here in the 21st century. Many tribes that have lost their, their language are trying to resurrect those languages. In addition to trying to uh, resurrect their native language, the Natchez people in Oklahoma are also uh, uh, bringing back some of the, of the ceremonial activities that they, they know that their, their ancestors did. Some of these are, are very private activities that they don't share with, with outsiders. Others, uh, uh, other activities like this can be observed and, uh, uh, and, and the Natchez people are coming back to the Natchez area here and using some of these, these mound sites associated with their people to perform some ceremonial activities. For example, the, the annual Natchez powwow here at the Grand Village of the Natchez Indians is a way for the Natchez people in Oklahoma to come back and get back in touch with their, uh, their ancestors and uh, the uh, Indian mounds in this area that were, were built by, by their people. One more thing about the Natchez powwow that I want to be sure and mention is that that this is a powwow held on a real American Indian ceremonial site. I say this because if people go to other powwows around the southeast or out west, most of the time they're held in, on, on fairgrounds or sports fields or places like that, whereas ours here at, at, at the Grand Village of the Natchez Indians is held on a ceremonial place, and I think that makes it a special powwow to the people who come here to participate in this annual event. The Grand Village of the Natchez Indians is, is open year-round. The museum is open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Saturday, and Sundays from 1.30 to 5 p.m. The grounds are open 24 hours a day year-round, so we never close the gate. People can come and, uh, at dawn and experience the sunrise here if anyone, if anyone wanted to. Admission to the Grand Village of the Natchez Indians is free. We have a number of educational programs available to school and adult groups, and so people can call, call us at 601-446-6502 and arrange for an educational program or perhaps a family picnic or get together here on the grounds.